This is the Oconee River, and today it flows freely through this section of Athens, Georgia. So here's the problem. Our river was not flowing freely, so we needed to fix that. And we fixed that here by removing an obsolete dam, but we retain the historically important portions of this site. This site was an old mill dam. There are thousands of these structures around that are no longer being utilized, but they represent a significant risk to human life. And in fact, these old mill dams uh, have claimed the lives of a number of people. And from the shoreline, you wouldn't know just how dangerous it is, but at high flows, these structures create dangerous hydraulics. And if you make a mistake, these hydraul hydraulics can be very, very costly. There are multiple ways in which a dam can negatively affect an ecosystem for fish and other aquatic organisms. Uh, fish are prevented from moving freely in order to breed, so spawning migrations. Fish are prevented from moving freely in order to feed on what they would naturally uh, seek to, to eat. And then fish can be isolated into smaller populations and you reduce the amount of genetic diversity, which after many generations can cause negative impacts. This large scale project can really, really be intimidating. There's so many different stakeholders, federal, state, uh, NGOs, uh, private citizens, etc. But I think that we've demonstrated that we have the capacity to do this and we can expand on it and we'll see a lot of benefits from, from, from this, this type of effort. It's easy to visualize habitat fragmentation on land, but in aquatic systems, this is an example of habitat fragmentation. So normally fish would be able to freely migrate, populations would not be disconnected, but dams can prevent those populations from interacting as they normally would, and that can really cause a negative effect. It does represent this uh, issue with aquatic connectivity. Um, when we remove those dams, we improve recreation, we get better safety, um, and we return aquatic connectivity and recreation value. Our original goal was to let this project serve as a model so that it could be used to show others that we can do this on a large scale basis. We also hope that in the process of learning, we could record what we did and, uh, and create a guide to help to inform others as to how they might do the same thing. And I think we've accomplished those goals. In 2018, this was the only project in the state of Georgia. Now we have multiple projects ongoing right now, and we have completed our guide to dam removal for obsolete dams, and it is available online for anyone who wants to check it out. An obsolete dam is one that no longer serves any function. So we're not getting electricity from it, it's not being used for flood control, uh, it's not being used for irrigation or any other purpose. The removal of these uh, structures can have multiple benefits, human safety, uh, aquatic connectivity for the fish, and also recreational benefits in terms of uh, safe and enjoyable utilization by a diverse group of people. But at the same time, we must recognize that there's a lot of historical value in some of these structures, and we need to look for a way that we can preserve the hist historically significant parts and still return aquatic connectivity and recreation value. This is our outdoor classroom, so we'll be coming back here again and again with groups of students for many years to come. We'll be able to monitor the progress of this project as it moves forward and share that information with others.